Hello everyone. This is the second and final part of our discussion on the Easter Triduum. We pick up the thread with the celebration on Holy Saturday. This is a day of quiet waiting for the resurrection. There is still sorrow even if it lacks the intensity of the previous day. Today there is a great silence on earth because the king sleeps. On the first Holy Saturday all seemed lost. The disciples were shattered. Only Mary kept faith and awaited the resurrection of her son. That is why every Saturday of the year is devoted to Our Lady. Christ has died, but his death is like a sleep on which he will awake on Easter morning. Christ has entered the abode of the dead. In baptism, St. Paul reminds us that we went into the tomb with Jesus and joined him in death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, we too might live a new life. The Easter Vigil begins with the approach of nightfall, and this is the heart of the Holy Week celebrations. St. Augustine, in the 5th century, he describes this night as the mother of all vigils. For Christians of antiquity, Easter was the feast of all feasts, this is the Paschal Feast, which includes all the other Christian mysteries. The name Pasch, or Passover, is of Hebrew origin. The Jewish Passover celebrated the deliverance of the Israelites from the oppression of Pharaoh. The destroying angel passed over, and that's how we get the word Passover, he passed over the houses of the Israelites which were sprinkled with the blood of the Paschal Lamb. The account of the Exodus is found in chapter 12 of that book of Exodus. This feast contains all the memory of God's wonderful deeds in the course of their history. The giving of the covenant on Sinai, the wonders of the Exodus and the final entry into the promised land. It is not just a memorial of a past event though but those who celebrated it felt themselves caught up and made shares in the experience of their forefathers. The Christian Pasch, it was at the same time in the year of the Jewish Pasch that the Passover of Jesus from death to life took place. Christ is our new Passover. He is the new Moses, leading the people from the slavery of sin to the pre freedom of the promised land of heaven. If you remember, the Israelites ate manna in the desert. Now the new manna is Christ himself. He is the bread of life. He gives us strength. He is the fountain of living water. He is the bronze serpent. And all who look on him with faith will be saved. According to John, St. John, it is at the hour of the evening sacrifice when the Paschal lambs were being slain in the temple that Jesus was crucified. Jesus, our Paschal lamb, is sacrificed. Now the vigil service begins and it starts with the service of light. Jesus is the light of the world. By his death and resurrection the powers of darkness are overcome. The service begins outside the church door where a large fire is prepared. The fire is blessed and a large paschal candle is lit from it. The candle represents the risen Christ. The fire represents a new beginning for humanity and hope for the world. The priest cuts a cross in the wax candle with a stylus. Then he traces the Greek letter Alpha above the cross and Omega below. Between the horns of the cross, the numerals of the current year are inscribed. This means that Christ is king of all the ages. And as he does this, the priest says, Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all times belong to him and all ages, but to him be glory and power for ever and ever. Amen. Five grains of incense are now inserted into the candle representing the five wounds of Christ and a prayer is said. 
With the lighted candle carried in front, everyone enters the darkened church. Three times the priest sings, Christ our light, and the people respond singing, Thanks be to God. The people's candles are now lit from the flame of the Paschal candle. This conveys the idea that the light is communicated to others. This happens when people respond to the gospel in faith and are baptised. The candle is now placed on its high perch in the sanctuary. The ancient Christian hymn, The Exalted, is now sung. It is a hymn of praise and joy to the risen Christ. It goes back to the 5th century. After the Exalted is sung, the people put out their candles and sit down for the Liturgy of the Word. And there are nine readings in all. But for pastoral reasons, the number of readings may sometimes be reduced. The whole atmosphere in which the readings are carried out should be relaxed and unhurried. Good readers make scriptural texts come alive. In a true sense, the readings on this holy night set before us is a whole synopsis of salvation history. In the Old Testament, it finds realisation. The first reading is taken from the book of Genesis. This is the account of creation. There is a connection between the first reading in Genesis and the new creation which comes about at baptism. In the baptismal ceremony, the priest addresses the newly baptised and says, You have become a new creation. The first creation, as we know, was disfigured by the sin of Adam and Eve. But Christ is the new Adam who restores all things. As we are baptised into his death, we are born anew and become heirs to the new paradise of heaven. The first paradise being forfeited by Adam and Eve. And they were driven from the garden of paradise, if you remember. In the creation account, the Spirit of God which hovered over the waters, it's the same Holy Spirit who sanctifies the waters of baptism. The creation of light also suggests baptism, which is a sacrament of enlightenment. Man was made in God's image and likeness. Through faith and baptism, we are renewed in the image of our Maker. Corinthians or Colossians 3.10 the prayer after the reading sums up the theme. The second reading is also from the book of Genesis. And it comes next. Abraham is known as our father in faith. In obedience to the Lord, he was prepared to sacrifice his only son Isaac. At the last moment, the angel stops him and a ram is sacrificed instead. Abraham prefigures Christ who was obedient unto death. Isaac is also a type of Christ. He is the innocent lamb who allows himself to be sacrificed. As a reward, Abraham was promised that his descendants would outnumber the stars. We are his descendants in faith. The third reading is obligatory. It describes the miraculous crossing of the Red Sea by the Israelites. This was an event of decisive importance for them, a breakthrough from slavery to freedom, and it symbolises the victory of Christ over the powers of evil. Like the Israelites of old, the newly baptised pass through the waters of baptism. They leave behind them the world of darkness. They set their sights on the promised land of heaven. Christ is the new Moses. The response earlier, Sam, following the reading, is in the form of a victory song. In the fourth reading from Isaiah, we hear how the covenant set up on Mount Sinai between God and his people is like a marriage contract. It is a partnership of love which demands fidelity and trust. Time and time again the Israelites were unfaithful, but God never disowned his spouse. At Easter we celebrate the mystery of divine love. 
In the fifth reading, God entreats his people to listen and be faithful to him is taken from Isaiah. Then he promises that he will make an everlasting covenant with them. This is fulfilled in Christ who seals the new eternal covenant in his blood. And we say those words every time we celebrate Mass. If we listen and take his words to heart, our souls will live. Our thirst will be satisfied. Now we come to the Easter Alleluia. The Easter Alleluia acclamation now makes its dramatic return with full gusto after the season of Lent, during which it is muted. This Hebrew word, like none other, is most characteristic of the whole Easter season. It is a loud acclamation of praise, joy and victory to the risen Christ. As St. Augustine says in the 5th century, it anticipates the heavenly liturgy. It heralds the gospel of the resurrection. It is the response to the Psalm 117. The gospel is read and is the most joyous of the whole year. It describes the events of Easter morning. The angel said to the women, He, that's Christ, is not here. He has risen. This great event, as we all know, is the foundation of of our Christian faith. The baptismal liturgy follows and from as early as the second century the baptism of adult catechumens was linked with Easter. The priest invites the congregation to pray for the adult converts if there are any. The litany of the saints is sung. We invoke their heavenly assistance on this occasion. The water to be used is blessed by a beautiful prayer which dates back to the 6th century. The baptismal font is a tomb in which we are buried to sin. It's also a womb from which we are reborn as children of God. The imagery of water in the Old and New Testament is brought out in the prayer of blessing. The Holy Spirit is invoked by lowering the paschal candle into the water. After renouncing Satan and professing their faith, the candidates are baptised. The rest of the congregation now renews their baptismal vows while holding lighted candles. We've been preparing for this moment throughout the whole period of Lent. The grace of Easter is a grace of faith newly found. The priest then sprinkles the people with holy water, again reminding them of their baptism. Next comes the Eucharistic liturgy, and if there are any newly baptised, they bring the bread and wine to the altar. This will be the Mass of their First Holy Communion. The Eucharist is the final Easter sacrament and it completes Christian initiation, the other two being baptism and confirmation. Through this Eucharist we are united more closely with the risen Christ who has died for love of us. We also look forward to his coming in glory. As Christians we have the privilege of spreading God's love into this world. Finally, we end the celebration with a reminder of Mary's presence at the resurrection. According to ancient belief, Mary, Jesus first appeared to Mary, his mother, after his resurrection. In some monasteries, at the conclusion of the Easter Vigil Mass, <coughs> as the monks <coughs> file out of the church, they stop and pray before an icon of Mary and they chant the Regina Chaley. This hymn replace, replaces the Angelus during the Easter season. I hope this helps you to understand this great celebration and see its place in the Christian calendar. Thank you all very much for listening and God bless you all.